whenever there is any new vulnerability or any new attack vector that is exposed in a particular package or software, there is a panic. For example, the well-known attacks like the log 4J or the typo spotting attacks or the solar wind attacks, we have seen that the supply chain attacks over the years have risen. Why? Because you are just using anything which is available on the internet as your Docker-based images, which is not the cool and the right thing to do. In this video, we'll go through some of the things which you can do for minimal base images and how we can achieve the zero CVE. I'll also conclude this video, especially with a big question on how I think this can be solved with something which is totally different. So stay tuned till the end. Now, over the years, yes, the CVE problem has risen. But wait, what is a CVE? A CVE is a common vulnerabilities and exposure. It is publicly known security flaw in a particular piece of software or hardware. And each CVE has a unique number or identifier that you can say, which makes it easier for people to just tag it. When you scan the software, you say that this particular CVE was introduced in this particular version or this particular version fixes this particular CVE. So like this, you can refer that. And it can be a CVE can be a problem that tells people, okay, this software is compromised in this particular version and an attacker can use it to kind of get either remote execution or some of the other attack or get a piece of your code or get in the middle to do something malicious in your whole pipeline and ecosystem. So over the years, what has happened? Since the rise of the supply chain security attacks, over the years, with the number of rising CVEs, exposures, there have been a lot of tool development as well. So, for example, Trivi scans amazingly all your software and gives you the high critical, low vulnerabilities. Then you have Sneak, then you have uh, Docker Scout. So you have well-known vulnerability scanners out there right now that you can use to scan your software. But again, wait, how you write your software these days? It's 2024, right? So these days, everybody is kind of writing and deploying on Kubernetes. So people are deploying their application on Kubernetes. They are like writing microservices, deploying their applications onto Kubernetes, how they are doing it. Uh, they are most likely using Docker files. Either you like it or do not like it, but people are writing Docker files. And Docker files has a concept where it uses something which is called a base image. Now, this is very critical and the, our whole story revolves around this base image. Docker file has a base image and traditionally there, there have been a lot of evolution in the Docker ecosystem as well. So, for example, earlier there were like traditional Docker files um, that has a single heavy build that comes out of it and that you run. Like it, it includes everything from libraries, dependencies, the code, the source code, everything and then builds the artifact and the artifact is also there and then you kind of run it. And then came the concept of multi-stage builds. So you have two stages and in one stage, you kind of build your artifact. In another stage, you copy that artifact so that you have you get minimal image and you also get less size image, which might lead to less CVEs as well. But that's not guaranteed, right? Because you're still using a base image and a base image can be Alpine, it can be Ubuntu, it can be any of the things available on the internet. It's like sticking a pen drive that you found on, uh, you know, the ground. And that's what people are actually doing, which is wrong. People are just using anything which is available on Docker Hub and just plugging it in their Docker files. So that's, all, that's not how it should be done. What are some of the common ways that people these days can, you know, use two things? One is minimal images and zero CV images. Our main goal for this particular video is zero CVE images. So first is the scratch image. Scratch is just empty image and there is nothing in it. Um, so scratch image are mostly used for the compiled languages. Uh, for example, Go, where you create a statically linked application. The problem with scratch images is that using it for the non-compiled languages or the languages where you have dynamic dependencies is hard. Because you have to pre-know, like you must, you must know all your app dependencies beforehand as you have to explicitly copy them in the multi-stage builds to your target release image. That is one of the big kind of issues. And then comes a concept of distroless. So distroless are the images which uh, have been built by a build system called Bazel. Bazel is kind of complex 
system which is out there. Now, again, as I mentioned, that things have been evolving and there have been efforts put being put in the place by various organizations uh, and various tools and technologies that is being developed. One of the cool stuff that I found for the base images, especially for zero CVEs and why zero CVEs is actually important. See, the problem is your application team can change, keep changing the Docker file, which is very hard for the security teams to kind of do continuous monitoring for the stuff that you have changed. Maybe they have some sort of standards put in place, but you are writing a Docker file and you keep iterating it. That eliminates reproducibility builds. We'll talk about reproducible builds some other time. And also how you verify those builds. Now, one such thing that I found very interesting was chain guard images. So chain guard has these images which are zero CV images and they are built by a special build system which is by the Apco and Melange. And how that works is like it, they have a configuration file and then you have uh, Apco and Melange. It follows the similar Docker pattern but that is only for the APK packages which is there. Just you cannot run the run instructions or anything. So you if, if you have the APK packages, you can easily build and ship the images, zero CV images using Apco and Belange. And chain guard images are being done using Apco and Belange. And now you might be wondering, they also might be using something as the base image for their chain guard images, right? So what they use is, which is something called Bolfi, which they call undistro Linux distribution, specifically to address the supply chain security issues. And they, using this, this whole new ecosystem that they have. So the chain guard image, they are able to update. They have solved the update mechanism. For example, in, in GitHub Actions, you have uh, the digest, digest bot. And as soon as the CV is passed, it keeps, it changes the base image whenever there is a new image in the uh, repo, chain guard repo for the chain guard images. And also they rebuild all of the software more frequently. So if there is any new past version which is available, that will be updated because of the software rebuild more frequently. So let's look some of it, uh, some of the things in action to actually understand what, what have we learned till now. And then we move to one of the most important things, what I feel about chain guard images, the whole zero CVE game, and what in my opinion can be a game changer with something totally different. So this is the images.chainguard.dev and you have a lot of uh, images which are there. So you have your developer images which are free to use. You can use all the images which are there. There are like Python, Go, um, HAProxy, Envoy for CICD. So they have like, I don't know, more than 3000 maybe images which are already available for um, use which are all zero CVEs and they have this feature where they update and patch all these images whenever there is a latest vulnerability fix for a CVE which is there and that can be scanned using the available scanners which we'll be doing shortly. So for example, uh, like I was telling, I have this main.go file that is simple hello world file. Now, traditionally, we have this big image. So it's basically from Golang, work direct directory, copy, install the dependencies, go run, go build and then expose and then run it. So when we try to build using docker build and and then we can check docker image ls grep and we can see, you can see the size of the image 1.3 gigabytes. So that those were the big images. The next one which came is the scratch. So let's do that. And now if we see the scratch, we can see only 10.5 megabytes and they all run. So we can actually do Docker run and we can do localhost 8080 and we can see the hello world over here. So those, all the images are uh, there and they run. Now, one thing to note over here is that some of these images are difficult to debug, especially the scratch and the distroless images, they are very difficult to debug. That's where you have another tool which is called Mint um, that you can do slim images using Mint Plus. You can also debug them pretty easily using your standard 
tooling. So I think that that also I would like to shout out I and Kyle um, and Ivan. We had a talk that we gave at gave at KubeCon as well on building a debugging tool for Distroless um, and Scratch and other set of images using kind of the similar debugging tools that we are aware of for this type of applications as well. And next one is the distroless one. So we'll kind of go to distroless. And let's see the size. It's 38 MB. Because again, I mentioned distroless images are not completely empty. They do have some, th some stuff inside that. And finally, we have the chain guard images. So it's very simple. Uh, you have your first build stage and in the second build stage, you have cgr.dev chain guard and for this we are just using the glibc dynamic image now let's use this and build the chain guard one and this is 23 mb so fairly low amount in size now there is also a image available which is called the min toolkit debug image so wolfie container image with some debugging utilities included suitable for using as a debugging tool now interesting thing is let's try to find some of the vulnerability so i already have trivi available over here uh, and we can check some of the vulnerabilities in the images that we have produced because our end goal was how we can reach the zero cve game and the chain guard images are also reproducible so you can check the uh, digests that are created using cosine and verify the digests of the images which are produced so that you can check the images are uh, reproducible and uh, Adrian did create a video on this on in chain guard on how chain guard images are reproducible so you can check that I'll put the link in the description of this video as well so trivi image All right, and we can see there are total zero CVEs in the Wolfie based chain guard image that we just built. Now let's do the same for Distroless. And we can see there are certain vulnerabilities in which are high and medium and moderate in this and even critical. So 67 vulnerabilities in this particular image. So you can see how cool is that? I mean, this is mind blowing. So this is what I found really fascinating uh, by using chain guard images that you can uh, like switch your base images. You don't have to break your workflow um, so much and you can still use your same Docker images and stuff. Just change the base image and use chain guard base images for the packages which it is available for. And that should be good enough to reach the goal of zero CVEs. Now, again, it depends on what how you tamper the Docker file on your own and use the packages or add more packages in that. But overall, the base image is still secure over there. And if you just add the source code and stuff, you should be able to have a good solid zero CVE image that you can use for your application peacefully and maintaining the supply chain security of your application. So the main goal of the video was to understand how we can go to the zero CVE game but still one of the questions that I want to ask and one of the things that I feel is very great in the ecosystem that is currently not serving the same purpose but it can is Nix. So let me give you a different picture now. There are tools like Buildpacks, Co and Jib where you do not have to write the Docker files and you can directly ship your code uh, like from code to the artifact. Now, it is not as hit because not as easy to customize. Uh, example, adding OS packages and, you know, certain compiler flags and stuff like that. Now, usually your image will be having your source configuration files and OS packages. And final app, final uh, image will be having the artifact, the configuration files and the OS uh, packages. So the shift happened previously as well, like from Chef Puppet on how to provisioning the infrastructure where we are telling the instruction to a form of like Terraform where you have input and the output. Similarly, in it's happening in the space where you would want to have a declarative file that you are giving and it builds the packages and it can tell you which package, what are the vulnerabilities for the packages that you are kind of using. So I think one thing that I want to point out is Nix. So Nix has support over 90 plus thousand packages already in place 
and I think it can play a very important role in the supply chain security and actually try to bring the security, like shift the security left towards the application developers. So yes, chain guard images are awesome, but I think Nix ecosystem can also play a big part here. So again, things are like Nix is complicated to use. So you should not be worrying about writing the flake files, one. Second thing is how you can actually use Nix when you are building something or when you are maybe building some file, some sort of simple file where you are just giving your dependencies, your application, your packages that you want to use for your application. And then you can, at that particular stage, you know that this particular package is having these many vulnerabilities or this particular package is not having any vulnerabilities. So you exactly use the package which is not having any vulnerabilities and use that in some file. And then it automatically, uh, some tooling automatically builds it and gives you the zero CVE image over there as well. So I think Nix can play a very important role because of the number of packages that it supports uh, to bring the zero CVE game and supply chain security to the next level. For now, let me know what you are using as your base images. And if you're not using ChainGuard, then what are you using? And are you even concerned about the security stuff, the supply chain security things, or um, you do not care at all about them and why you don't care about them? Because there are regulations which are coming in, especially in US and EU and also coming in all the other countries slowly. I think by 2027, 2028, it will be bad mandatory for everyone to kind of adhere to some of the principles in the supply chain security space and to focus on zero CVEs. Many companies are doing it right away. That's why the whole ecosystem is in place and many will be forced to do later on. So why wait when you can use kind of some of the cool stuff which is already out there like chain guard images and I expect more from the next community in this space. If I might not be knowing some tool. If you are aware of any tool in the Nix ecosystem, please do let me know. Uh, thank you for watching the video. I hope you got a gist of what base images are, maybe what we are doing wrong and what we can do right, especially by using the chain guard images and take it to the next level and uh, have the whole supply chain security thing within our organizations as well. So thank you so much for watching and hope you like the video. Do share it with anyone who wants to go zero CVE.